This is the Eurostar podcast with the title Information for Stakeholders Begin with the End in Mind by Rick Marcelis, a senior test consultant at Society in the Netherlands and also a board member of Testnet, the independent association for software testers in the Netherlands. Welcome, all you Eurostar listeners, to my talk about how to find out what information your stakeholder wants and how to inform your stakeholder in a way that he will notice and be able to take the decisions he needs to take. Some time ago, a test leader came to me and had a question about bringing across the message uh, about the software that was not so very good. And he needed to bring this message across to the stakeholders, but the stakeholders didn't act on the information they got. So I asked this test lead about the status, and although the test specifications were ready and the test execution was well underway, The test plan still was not approved. Probably the test plan was not even read by the stakeholders. So I first asked, what about reporting? And well, the test uh, lead had sent out some emails, but didn't have much time to spend on reports because he was still working on the test plan. He never got questions or reactions on the test plan, however. So, test plan not approved, testing well on the way, no formal reporting. Do you recognize this situation? In my talk during the Eurostar conference in Manchester, which had a title Fear Psychology in the Pursuit of Quality, I referred to the book of Stephen Covey called uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The second habit is begin with the end in mind. Think about what is the only product of testing that the principal stakeholder is interested in? Is he interested in a nice test plan or a master test plan? Is he interested in thousands of test cases or valuable test scripts, whatever? Well, no. Actually, the principal stakeholder only is interested in the end report on which he bases his go-no-go decision. Knowing this, at the start of your test project, decide what to do. In my opinion, you better don't start writing a test plan. You first start making your report. Of course, at the start of the project, you don't have many information to put in the report, but you can make the table of contents and an outline of the report. And with this, you go back to your principal stakeholder and ask him, if this is the information he needs for his go-no-go decision. And, for example, let's say you have made a nice report with some uh, uh, headings about what you're going to report about, and your principal stakeholder says, hey, in this report there's nothing about performance. And you think, ooh, yeah, of course. But you never ask me to test the performance. Well, it's good to know that you also like information about performance in this end report. Based on this, you can make your test plan because of course, you as a test manager or test leader, you will need um, a test plan to uh, write down what all the activities are that you would like to do and also to have a planning and a resources uh, organization, all the aspects that need to be covered in a test plan to be able to organize your testing in a professional way. But keep in mind the principal stakeholder only is interested in the report. That's what he will read and that's what you need to 
delivered. Now, do you make an end report or could you approach that in another way? In my opinion, you never make an end report. You only make progress reports. For example, every week or every two weeks, maybe even every month, depending on how uh, long your project is going to last. But uh, let's suppose you do a weekly uh, reporting and then at one moment there is the uh, point in time that the, the, dis the stakeholder wants to make his go-no-go -no -go decision. Normally, there is a moment planned where this go-no-go -no -go decision should be taken. But have you ever m met the situation where this moment is changed? So often it is delayed because the project itself is delayed. But also it happens that he wants to take the go-no-go -no -go decision earlier. He wants to know if he can go live before. For example, because he has heard that a competitor is working on the same type of uh, project or service. Well, if you have a progress report that's based on what your stakeholder needs to know, he gets the information he would need for a go-no-go -no -go decision every week. A good thing of that is that every week he sees, sees this information and in the first weeks he probably will come to you with a lot of questions. because. It's the first time he gets his report, it's new to him, he doesn't understand everything, and maybe he will also come with some extra additional things he wants to know. And it's good for you that you get uh, this feedback, because then you can adapt your test plan where necessary. Over the time, the stakeholder will get used to the information he gets, and he sees the uh, quality of the system uh, increase, he sees the number of risks decrease, so he gets the feel of what way the uh, direction is of this project. And well, while uh, getting all this information, the principal stakeholder can take the decision he needs to take at the moment he wants to take it. Using a simple dashboard at the start of the uh, at the start of the report, for example with traffic lights or smileys, you will catch the eye of the stakeholder. If he has any additional qu uh, request for information, he knows where to find it in the report or he will contact you. So by beginning with the end in mind, your stakeholder will be much more involved and Everyone involved will be more pleased with the way testing takes part in reaching business goals. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions or remarks, don't hesitate to contact me using Twitter, LinkedIn, email, whatever means. Thank you and goodbye.